Okay, so in this video we're going to move on to um, having a look at sampling with Sampler uh, and then with Simpler. Um, so Sampler we'll use to create pitched instruments and we'll be able to we'll look at how to tune um, pitched sounds that aren't necessarily musical sounds, um, so things that resonate in nature or mechanical objects or whatever. Uh, and then in the next video we'll move on to doing percussive sounds and we'll do that using Simpler and then we'll look at how to make that all more interesting by using racks. So let's get started in this one by putting a sampler instrument on our track and remember that synthesis and sampling are different um, where synthesis generates sounds by using oscillators or physical modeling um, and sampling plays back audio that's been recorded from somewhere in one way or another. So um, let's get started. Uh, when you open Sampler nothing will happen. If you play MIDI notes um, you don't get any sound because there's no sample in the instrument at this stage. So I'm going to start by picking a couple of sounds that have been recorded um, that aren't tuned, so they're not going to be a perfect C or an E or an A or whatever. They're going to be some frequency that we're going to need to work out and then tune um, in order for it to be playable along with other instruments. Okay, so to get started, um, I'm going to go to my sound library, which I've set up in places by adding that folder. And I've got some sounds that a previous student recorded which is pretty handy. And one of them is cowbell, so I'm going to start with this. And we should be able to preview these sounds. Might just turn preview up back up a little bit there. Okay, so this mallet number two will work. I'll drop that into my sampler instrument. Um, and before I go much further, I'm going to increase the volume a bit, so you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit for you, increase the volume there. Now, before I have to do anything else, um, that'll be playable now, so I can play um, the middle C, that should be C3, and we can see what note that is really easily by creating a clip, and we could zoom in a little bit. So you can see that I'm playing C3, and that will play the sample back at its original pitch, like this. Okay, so double-clicking the track header takes us back to the device view. Now, I'm playing a C note, which you've just seen, but this isn't necessarily a C. Unless that cowbell was tuned already to C, um, this won't be playable with another instrument. So I might demonstrate that for you quickly by opening something like a piano. Uh, this one will do fine. I'm just going to drop a piano up here. And I'll play a C on the piano. Then I'll play a C on this instrument. And if we... I'll turn the piano down a little bit. solo the both of them. They're not tuned and if I play lots of different notes it just sounds silly because they're not uh, in tune yet. So um, there's a couple of ways to tune it. I could do it by ear. Um, before I do that I'm going to set up a looping scenario so we've got um, the ability to sustain the note because it's quite short at the moment. Okay, so let's jump into sustain mode and then we'll look at tuning it after that just because that means we can hold a pitch for longer. So if I turn sustain mode on, you notice this big orange thing shows up and what that allows us to do is adjust a section of the sample to loop um, while I hold the note. So while I'm sustaining the note, this is the section that's going to play back and you should be able to see the playhead move. Okay, sounds pretty bad at the moment, but that's all right. We're going to add a crossfade here. That's stop the clicking. 
Okay, that'll do for now. And I'm going to just add a little bit of release to the sound just because I don't like it ending in such an abrupt way at this stage. So in the filter and global tab, so you've got different tabs along the top here. We're not going to go into all of them, but I do want to add a bit of release time. Okay. So even with just this simple looping and release time, we've changed the sound from this little cowbell into something playable. All right, let's work on this a bit more. So back to tuning. If I sustain the C note and I play going to command click to play these at the same time. It's not in tune, so I, I have to find a way to tune that. Let's do these one at a time again. So, Right, so tuning works by using um, or setting the root note. So if I move this up and down, you'll notice the whole sample changes. Um, pitch. Let's go down another one. That's closer, right? Detune it up a little bit. Obviously, it's a different timbre, but that sounds closer. I'm going to try playing them. So that's pretty close. Turn the piano down again a bit. All right. So I'm happy that that's close to a C which I've just done by ear. So it's just by comparing how does this sound compared to this. And um, that's one way of tuning it. Now, um, a more accurate way or a way to check that um, is to use the tuner plugin. So before, um, I think it was 9.2, or maybe it was 9.5, I think it was 9.2, there didn't used to be a tuner in Ableton. Um, so if you've got an older version, you won't have this, but Hopefully you don't have an older version. Oh, look at that. So it's a, probably a tiny bit flat, but I mean, that was pretty close. There we go. So one cent higher. It's going to wobble more as you play lower. So it's going to be less, uh, it's going to hold the pitch less, but that's all right. That's what makes um, sampler instruments um, interesting sometimes is that the imperfections that they're not holding an exact note uh, makes it kind of interesting all right let's um let's have a look at how that worked because this is a sampling concept um, that you need to know about so this tiny tiny little R represents the root note um, of this sample so what that means is because we've put the root note up to F sharp, it's brought the C, which was whatever it is, five or six semitones below the C note on the keyboard up in line with that. I'll demonstrate this in class um, another way as well, so we can look at that later on. But that's the root note there, um, and that means that if I want to play this back at its original speed and pitch, I would play F sharp 3. Um, and having the root note there means that when I play a C, I get a C, which is what's happening. So I've successfully loaded up a sound that has a pitch but wasn't tuned. And I've set it um, using the sustain mode to loop. And there's a couple of different sustain modes here. 
by the way. So this this is not looping. This just plays from start to end. This is looping um, when it gets to the end. It starts from the start again. Let's slow that down. Okay, and the crossfades are affecting that. If we do this one, it's a backwards and forwards type of um, playback. So it'll give you a different different sound, so pick whichever works well for what you're doing. 